it take you to make a book? So the whole process of making a book is about, it can be up to two years. This one, my new book, Queen of the Stars, took about six months. So I started having ideas and sketching once I realised I wanted to make a book about the stars in September 2022. And then had lots of experimenting, making artwork and developing printmaking, which is how I made this book. I made it with mono print. Um, and that was for all of the autumn until Christmas. And then making the book, so putting it all together, making the final artwork, um, took another three months with other things going on. Um, and it's nice to have time in between um, making the images to let things settle and to reflect on things. So I put the pictures in my magic drawer, that's what I call it, and then take them out and see how I feel about them after some time. So at least six months it takes to make a book. Um, and then it might take a bit longer to get this one out into the world for the publisher. What inspired you to make this book? So this book is inspired by my love of the stars. I love at night looking up on a clear night and seeing all of the stars and feeling completely insignificant and how nothing matters. And I just find that really calming. And it allows me to live my life a lot more freely and worry less about making mistakes and failing because one little thing that I do compared to the life of a star or the whole universe is just nothing. And I find that really relaxing. Um, and the story is about this girl growing up under the stars and how she loves the stars. And she expresses her love for the stars through drawing and painting, which is something that I love to do. So I'm very much connected to the story. Um, and other things that inspired it are real relationships that I have with people in my life. So the first part of the book is about a girl and her dad. So I used to love going to art galleries with my dad and we'd enjoy the world through looking at other people's paintings and making things. Um, and then other scenes are taken from me enjoying the stars with my friends in Peru and me enjoying the stars in London and with my husband in the planetarium, which is where we had our third date in Bristol um, and in a camper van, which is something that we would love. So it's all things that are real to me that I've wrapped together um, using the stars. And how did you make the artwork for the book? Oh, good question. So the artwork from the book is all made with monoprint, which is this beautiful process where you put ink onto a quake and then wipe away the ink to create the stars. And I found it really beautiful to basically drawing the light. So starting with the dark and carving out the light, I feel gave it this really glowy quality um, that the character really shines in the darkness. And I found it a lot easier to draw that way. Um, drawing people is something I found quite challenging. It's if I have to do it with a pencil. Whereas when I could sculpt the figure out of the ink with my fingers, it felt a lot more, um, I just found it easier to see. And so I make these big prints. Um, this is one of the first ones I made. It's about this big in real life uh, and make lots of versions of it. And the way I do that is I roll down a layer of ink, wipe it away, put paper on top and put it through a press that squishes the ink onto the paper. And then I draw all the little details on top. So add a bit of color and the faces and all of the nice little extra bits and do a bit of ink splatting as well with a toothbrush to get the stars on. So super fun. When does your book get released? Good question. When does the book get released? So it is yet to find a happy home. I'm looking for someone who would love to work with me to bring this book to life and hopefully as soon as possible Queen of the Stars will be in the world. How did you write the story? Oh, how did I write the story? So with my other books, I have written the story first and then put the pictures with it. But with this one, I made the images first on a theme. So I think the first image I made was 
this planetarium and I just really felt there was a lot of emotion in it. It was a different version of this one. Um, and so I wanted to make something about people enjoying the stars. And then I made a different image. I think that mountain one there I made second. And it seemed to be there was a theme coming through. So I kept making images um, on this theme of enjoying the stars and people and how they relate to each other. And then was trying to find some words to go with it. And I tried lots of different things like just writing what I felt about each image and see if that tied it together. And I tried um, putting song lyrics to it, which didn't really work, but it got the feeling of what I wanted in it. Um, like there's a Coldplay song called Higher Power, which I felt really fitted the story, um, but that didn't work. And then one day I was running and realized that I'd made the book about the life cycle of a girl. So she's growing up and uh, then making her own family at the end. So I thought, hmm, what about the life cycle of a star? So the story tells, uh, the words tell the story of a star evolving in a scientific way. And it creates this beautiful parallel between the girl and the star and how um, we're quite similar in a way. And I really like the phrase, we're all made of star stuff or we're all made of stardust. Um, I thought that was really beautiful. So having the words been quite different to the pictures makes that interesting relationship. Yeah. How do you get your ideas? So I always make books about things that are important to me and things that I would like to learn about happiness. And so the idea for this came from wanting to follow up a bit from the girl who walked to the moon uh, and this girl who is enjoying being out in the world. Um, but yeah, the idea from this came from just making lots of images and really came from the feeling of looking at the stars. I knew I wanted to make a book about how nothing really matters and how relaxing that is and how we can be imperfect and life can be imperfect. Um, that was something that I was learning recently, so it felt really good to put it in a book. <laughs> What's the book about? So the book is about this little girl who grows up um, loving the stars and she really appreciates the night sky and we see her enjoying it in lots of different ways. So being read books about the stars, painting the stars with her dad, going traveling and enjoying the stars with her friends and then um, making her own way through life all underneath the stars. And it's about how nothing matters how life happens, we grow up, bad things can happen, we can lose people that we love, and then it's all okay. Um, and it's all very beautiful. And um, yeah, it's just about, it's about love really. <laughs> it's about love and the love that we have for the people that are closest to us. But most importantly, the love that we have for ourselves. It's a real celebration of um, us being stars and us being shiny and us having time to shine and us being human and how beautiful that is. So yeah, it's about love, yeah. What's your favorite page in the book? Ooh, what's my favorite page? I think my favorite page is this is most other people's favorite page. I think it's a great climax of the book where she makes her book finally. It's this real victory. Um, this is maybe my second favorite page, which is based actually on a birthday card that a friend made for me, um, which shows the view from the London Planetarium in Greenwich. And I just love the energy of this. Um, but I think my favorite is this one. Yeah, it shows me meeting my husband, who I love very much, and us enjoying the stars together. And this is uh, based on real nebulae in the sky. So this is the heart and the soul nebula. And I think they are the furthest we can see in the universe. And I love um, that they are together. It looks like a heart and kind of like a baby in the sky. And 
I love how I got to draw all these different people enjoying the stars underneath. So there's all their little faces I really enjoy drawing on. Um, yeah, I just really enjoyed making it and I feel like there's a lot of love in here. Um, yeah, my favourite. What's your favourite colour to use? Ooh, my favourite colour to use, as you can see, is blue and orange. The whole book is very blue and orange. I go through phases with my artwork, so um, this one I wanted to have a really dark colour to be able to do the night sky and I felt to have something really glowy on top, the orange worked really well. Um, like this gorgeous spine that I really love to. Um, and now I'm going through a green phase, I'm doing some swimming books. Um, and sometimes it's something as easy as choosing this blue because it was the one I could get straight from the tin, from the ink that was available in my print room. So um, yeah, the color choices can be influenced by lots of things. But yeah, I do love this orange. What's your favorite one in general? Oh, my favourite colour in general is, I think, this orange. I love wearing it. I feel very powerful wearing bright orange. But I do also love bright yellow. I'd say that was like my brand colour. So anything really sunny, I'm really into. Um, yeah, orange and yellow. Is this a follow-up to The Girl Who Walked to the Moon? This is sort of a follow-up to The Girl Who Walked to the Moon in as much as it's about a girl who's going out into the world and exploring it and having an adventure for the first time. It's a lot more real than The Girl Who Walked to the Moon. Um, the idea started for this book a couple of years ago when I wanted to make a sequel to The Girl Who Walked to the Moon and it involved another space girl going up into space enjoying um, trying to get to Mars um, and I realized I actually really wanted to enjoy depicting things that I could see and convey my love for the world that I live in uh, in a bit more of a grounded way in a real way so the story changed a lot from that original idea but that was the heart of it that I wanted to carry on the girl who walked to the moon because it's a character that people connect with so much and find really empowering about going for their dreams and really living their lives. So, yeah, it started from that, but then evolved into something very different. Do you think you're going to try another book around space? Ooh, good question. I loved making a book about space. I, it was very different for me to work with dark colours and draw light on top of it. And I loved this process. And it was something that I captured when I've been making books about swimming. So the water, when you swim outside, can actually be very dark, but the ripples in it are really light, and that was really enjoyable to draw. So I could maybe be making more books about space. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy it. And do you like stargazing? I love stargazing so much. I found some of the best times of my life have been when I've been on a beach at night looking at the stars or in an amazing national park in the United States camping outside. I love being in nature and looking up at the stars and seeing all the patterns and whether they're familiar or not. I think it's just, it's incredible to wonder at how far away they are and how big the universe is and how small we are. And I also love when I'm at home in my garden, looking at the stars at night and thinking that my friends who live on the other side of the world might be looking up at the same stars um, and feeling connected to them through that, I think is pretty beautiful. If you, if you could go to space, would you? Oh, if I could go to space, I wouldn't say no. It's definitely not one of my top priorities because I think I find it really scary and that maybe I feel really sick. Um, I know my husband would love to go to space. He's a real nerd and loves watching SpaceX launch their rockets. And uh, yeah, I love the idea of exploring, but there's so much for me to explore in this world that I think my explorations will probably be contained on the Earth. Who knows? Who do you like to stargaze with? Oh, I love to stargaze with my husband and with my friends. Um, 
and also on my own. I do love that feeling of just being with myself, looking at the sky and yeah, like marveling in who I've become and all the things that I'm creating. Um, but I do love to go also to the planetarium with my husband and when I'm on holiday with friends, looking up at the sky together, which is what this spread was all about. And this was a real life event. Uh, I have some amazing friends who live in the jungle in Peru and we made a big art project and at the end we let our Chinese lanterns into the sky and looked at the stars as the lanterns were going up there as if like our lanterns were becoming the stars. That was really fun. So yeah, anyone who will enjoy looking at the stars with me, I'll take, yeah. What is the message of your book? The message of my book is that life happens and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good and that it's all beautiful and that we take strength from the things that we find hard and we can make them into beautiful things um, so that it's all okay and that's something that I didn't learn when I was young and I'm really glad that I know now that even when I'm having a hard time I know that I'm going to create something beautiful out of it and so everything is great all of life. Did you take inspiration from Van Gogh? Oh, I did take some inspiration from Van Gogh. So, as you'll see on the end pages or end papers, I call these the start papers because they're at the start. Um, I have some books about the stars, including one about Van Gogh and his starry night. So I wanted to have a painting in the book that the little girl and her dad could work on together. So they paint the starry night together. And I just find it such a beautiful painting with so much energy in it and I love the marks that Van Gogh makes and how much like, imagination he puts into his artwork. And I realised, I can't, I don't know if I did it consciously or not, but I saw this painting for real in uh, New York last summer in the MoMA when I was on my honeymoon and um, it was actually much smaller than I imagined it to be. Um, but I think it's really beautiful and so it became a big part of the book which at the end you see the family are enjoying themselves underneath a Van gogh -y kind of sky. Which is beautiful. Do you see yourself as the main character? I do see myself as the main character. I find it really hard to make a book about anyone else. So whether it's me as a girl with red hair or me as an astronaut, or me as a giraffe, or me as a squirrel. It's something that I just find it so helpful to work out my stuff through a book. Um, maybe one day I will make a book about a character that's not me, but I find that I can really connect with the story and make artwork that's so much more, like has so much feeling in it if I can put myself a lot in the book. So I really enjoyed making it about me. Yeah, this is like a little me. I based this on a photo of me when I was, uh, I think about three, and standing on the in my garden at home, uh, just looking full of like wonder at the world and mischief and um, excitement for life. And yeah, she's my my talisman. Um, so yeah, I made it about me. Have you got any new projects coming up? Ooh, I have a new project about swimming called Why I Swim and it's about my love of wild swimming with my friends and about finding peace in the water and being outside in nature and I'm also working on a book about the jungle I love the jungle and it might be a non-fiction book about a jaguar and her journey through the jungle and that we learn about all the plants and animals on the way but it's very much in early development and I'm just enjoying going out and drawing plants and animals and we'll see, we'll see what happens. And also this summer I'm planning on doing lots of drawing for a book about surfing. So I'm going on a surf holiday, so we'll see if that comes to something as well. Who inspires you the most? Who inspires me the most are a lot of the people who I'm doing my masters in children's book illustration with. So there are some incredible artists and we really work really hard to find new ways of making art and making images that really um, show who we are and express what we really want to say. 
and we really push ourselves out of our comfort zones to find new ways of doing things which I know a lot of people find uncomfortable but we go through that discomfort together um, I'm trying to think of specific people there's so many illustrators who I love um, and also people who inspire me are um, I have some amazing friends who I know from doing happiness workshops in Peru with and we're all people who decide that happiness is our priority in life and they're people who are constantly overcoming fears, choosing to face things that they find difficult, putting themselves out there, being vulnerable and just putting their own happiness first and I find that really inspiring. We're doing a great job. <laughs> favourite book that I've made is this one because there's so much love in it and so much of myself in it and it really makes me feel um, before this it was The Girl Who Walked to the Moon um, it's such an important story about going for our dreams and uh, I find it's the one that connects most with people um, but I think there's maybe a tendency to love the one I'm making at the moment and then I'll get bored of it and want to make a new one. <laughs> but yeah, this one, when my husband read it, he cried. So I thought, oh yeah, that's that's a great, a great story. And this one I really enjoyed making. The whole process was really joyful. I was together with other people in a print room making the artwork. So it was really fun. And that was very different from the other books that I've made. So yeah. Favorite. Have you always loved to draw? I've always loved drawing and I've done it more or less at different parts of my life. So I drew loads when I was a kid and would always be uh, making comics and uh, little like scrapbooks and drawing birthday cards and all sorts of things. And then I stopped drawing when I went to university and um, but still always loved just like doodling and, and creating things and then I did a bit more life drawing and then got back into it again and I'm so happy now that I have it's something that I feel so calm like going out on a beautiful day like today sitting in the sun and just drawing the world is such a beautiful way of appreciating this incredible world that we live in and I find now I see things and see the beauty in things that I never noticed before because I get to look at it in for ages to try and draw it. Um, so I've always loved drawing, but I'm loving it more and more. The more love I put into it and the more intention I put behind it and the more I find I can draw things I didn't think I could. Like people, oh, I really thought I couldn't draw people and we're practicing, practicing, practicing and I'm finding a way that works for me and that's really fun. Is there any happy book company merchandise to come in the future? There should definitely be some happy book company merchandise. I'm thinking t-shirts, caps, bottles with this awesome logo that the lovely Supple Studio designed for me. Um, I have recently learned that there's some interest in my merchandise, so I will be looking into that for sure. Um, get your orders in now. <laughs> yeah. um, what's your dream? You're coming up with amazing <laughs> questions. <laughs> my dream for the Happy Book Company is to share my books with as many kids and families as possible and to keep making stories that really light me up and that I enjoy making and find more and more enjoyable ways of making art and connect with other people through making the artwork as well. Um, and maybe one day some huge thing will happen with the happy book company and i'll be working with other illustrators and authors who love making books about happiness as well it's interesting i think i haven't dared to dream where this could go so it's it's good food for thought i'm so enjoying what i'm doing now and making books and learning new ways of making artwork that i really enjoy that I haven't thought too much ahead because you never know what will happen but I think 
I'm always amazed at how whenever I have a little dream, I make it come true. So why not have a bigger dream as well? Because I always make them come true. Yeah, big, we're going to go big places with the Happy Book Company. I would love to have books in different languages and travel to different countries and share my stories with kids from different countries. So if anybody wants to do an event, New York maybe, that would be great. Just get in touch. The next event I will be doing is the Bath Children's Literature Festival, where I will be sharing The Girl Who Walked to the Moon, and we'll be having a great story time, and that's in September in Bath. And hopefully I'll be doing some others over the summer uh, in schools and in autumn as well. Yay! Aww, that was, so that was amazing! <laughs> You're absolutely amazing. Aww, thank you guys.